Welcome back. In this Zoom video, we are going to start our exploration of the lymphatic system, which is often sometimes known as the immune system. So you're doing great on this section where we are moving on to an organ system which utilizes a lot of the information that we learned about when we learned about um, blood cells and we learned about blood vessels. So when we're talking about the lymphatic system, it's one of its main purposes is immunity. And we'll spend a lot of time talking about that at the end. But there are a lot of other functions that students may not be aware of. So in addition to having an immune response, this organ system is trying to keep you from getting sick. So it has this function of defense. It, we have physical barriers and we have chemical barriers and we have cells that enable this. And so as a result of that, we're going to have some very nonspecific responses where it doesn't really matter what is trying to attack your body, we'll have the same responses for everything. But then if we have failure of all of our nonspecific responses, we do have some very specific responses that can happen. And by specific responses, what I mean is if we develop a response against one pathogen, say for instance, um, measles, it won't work against coronavirus because those cells are anti-measles. Another important function is the lymphatic system absorbs the extra tissue fluid. So we'll look at this in a little more detail um, shortly. But in the meantime, if you look at the upper right quadrant, you will see a capillary bed going from an arterial to a venule on the other side. And among them, you have this green structure. So green is often used to represent lymphatic structures. And this green structure, if you look at it, on the left side, what you will notice is on the arterial side of the capillary bed, because of the pressure going in, there is more hydrostatic pressure. So fluid tends to leave the capillary bed and goes into the interstitial spaces. And from the interstitial spaces, it can go into lymphatic structures. And then on the capillary bed, on the venous side, because we have the albumin giving such a huge osmotic pull, it's actually gonna suck back a lot of the fluid that's in the interstitial space. So when blood vessels leak into the interstitium, if it doesn't go back into the blood vessels, the lymphatic system can drain that fluid. Now, if that doesn't happen, we can end up with something called lymphedema. So normally what happens is once the fluid and the substances are within the lymphatic system shown here on the left in green. They will travel the entire lymphatic system and we'll see the names of all these structures and eventually dump back into the bloodstream right before it enters the heart. If that doesn't happen, like for instance, if there's something wrong with your lymphatic structure, then you can get lymphedema. So you can get lymphedema, for instance, if you've had surgery and it's removed your local lymphatic structures or elephantiasis, which is um, not common here in the United States, but in tropical areas, there's a little parasite that grows in water. And so when humans are in the water doing whatever they're doing in the water, whether it's bathing or um, farming or whatever, um, they can be spread by infected mosquitoes. And then the parasite actually sets up its life in these lymphatic structures and so it blocks the flow and you could end up with elephantiasis which just means that your legs um, have the resemblance of an elephant's legs. Another major function that most students are totally un unaware of is the lymphatic system is responsible for absorbing any dietary lipids and then transporting them so they can go into the bloodstream and so if you're going, oh, Dr. Powell, I don't think we need to absorb any dietary fat. I got enough fat going on. I want to tell you, yes, you do. And I'll show you why shortly. But as opposed to your proteins and your carbohydrates, which are going to get absorbed through the epithelium and then go to blood vessels here in the wall, 
Limpets are too big, okay? And they are not water soluble. So they and blood do not get along. So instead they travel into this lymphatic capillary that we find in the small intestine known as a lacteal. And all the lacteals will join together to form other structures and eventually this will be dumped back into the bloodstream. If we were to take the dietary fats out of these lacteals, this is what it would look like, this watery, milky substance, but it's actually not milk because it's high fat. So, um, and this is called chyle. And so it's super important because there are four very specific vitamins that through the chyle being absorbed in the lacteals from your dietary choices, that we can get these four vitamins. And these four vitamins are our fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K. So as we mentioned previously, vitamin A is used for vision. We need that um, for our photoreceptors and our rods and cones. Vitamin K is required for blood clotting. When you learn about coagulation cascade, you learn about the function of vitamin K. Vitamin D, as we learned, is super important for making strong bones because without adequate levels of vitamin D, we cannot absorb any dietary calcium. So we need it for calcium homeostasis, not just for our bones, but so we have adequate calcium levels for our muscles to contract. And vitamin E is an antioxidant, which means it's going to be repairing damage that can be happening from free radicals. So another important function of this organ system is this is where a lot of our white blood cells are made and are distributed. And we will talk about them specifically in later videos. And so all these functions together help us defend against pathogens. And in fact, some of these cells are specifically searching and looking for things that might not belong and then hopefully destroying them before we even know, so long before we become sick. And that's it for this first section, the introduction to the lymphatic system. And I'll see you shortly as we learn what lymph really is.